Tonight, new coronavirus deaths as it continues to spread in Washington as another person is rushed away by ambulance. It's been a very trying time for everybody involved. The facility at the epicenter of our state's outbreak speaks publicly for the first time. The number of confirmed coronavirus cases in our state continues to climb tonight. Good evening. I'm Lindsay Sheldon. Right now, there are 102 total cases here in Washington, and that includes 16 deaths, one in Snohomish County and the 15 others in King County. All but two of the deaths statewide are linked to the same nursing facility, Life Care of Kirkland. Our team coverage starts with Cairo 7's Deborah Horn in Kirkland. And Deborah, that facility is finally getting extra help. Help from the CDC for their depleted staff. Lindsay, those extra workers have begun arriving. We are told they will rotate in and out here. We are told they are desperately needed as the focus here remains on the vulnerable residents. Just after 3.30 Saturday afternoon, another resident of Life Care Center loaded into an ambulance, presumably for the short ride to Evergreen Hospital, a sign that this remains the nation's epicenter for the coronavirus epidemic. Patients, or residents as I should say, have been segregated into their rooms. Tim Killian, hired to speak for Life Care Center, acknowledged the outbreak is taking a steep toll here. 14 residents have died of coronavirus. More than a third of the staff has developed symptoms and cannot work. The CDC has stepped into the breach to help, including Saturday. Specifically, we did receive a number of extra nurses, practitioners, and doctors, and that has been hugely helpful. Life Care Puyallup nurse Kathleen Lombard is volunteering to help here in Kirkland. Why? Because if it were my elderly parents here, I would want to know that they would have the best care possible and a, a really upbeat nurse like me to take care of them. But this woman worries about her parents, who visited a resident several times as the virus silently spread throughout this facility. There are many visitors to the center that have not been contacted. This is a, something that's falling through the cracks. Is anything being done to help ease their minds? If they want to be tested, may they be tested? As I said, we've received limited number of test kits out just for our own residents. So uh, we would encourage everybody who feels like they have come here and have concerns or showing symptoms to report that to their doctor. Killian says their residents remain here whether they are sick or not because, frankly, no other facility will take them. And in some cases, they are simply too infirm to go home. Now, he says no one except essential personnel are being allowed inside this building. In fact, he hasn't been able to go inside either. But he says he will hold another news conference at 1 o'clock Sunday afternoon. We'll be here, too. Reporting live in Kirkland, Deborah Horn, Cairo 7 News. Thank you, Deborah. Washington's coronavirus epidemic continues to receive attention from state and national lawmakers. Today, we were there as Congresswoman Susan Del Bene toured Evergreen Health, where several coronavirus patients are in quarantine. Cairo 7's Ryan Sims is live at Evergreen tonight. And Ryan, part of this tour was to get a better understanding of coronavirus. And that is why she said it was so critical for her to be here today to get a better idea of how to keep emergency and medical workers safe. They have done just a tremendous job, and I just want to thank all the doctors, nurses, healthcare workers, all of the staff. As part of her tour, the congresswoman met with more than a dozen doctors and nurses here at Evergreen. Part of those discussions was to examine what Evergreen has done during this crisis and which steps could be followed at other hospitals. We have folks who are outside of our direct medical personnel who also are facing shortages and also have a critical need. So we're going to continue to work to make sure that's available. And at a new conference, the congresswoman wasn't immediately asked about her tour here. Instead, she was questioned about President Trump's comments this week, where he called Governor Inslee a snake. Her response was swift. I was with the governor again yesterday, and I know his top priority is the health and safety of the people of Washington state, and the president could learn a lot by following the governor's lead. Politics aside, one thing the congresswoman complimented was Evergreen's system of containing patients, including a part of the hospital that changes the flow of air in certain rooms to prevent viruses from spreading. Doctors here told her they were prepared for more possible patients in the future.
future. One word, uh, humbling. Humbling to watch these, uh, these staff members come to work every day, as they did before all this, to take the best care of their patients. Now, beyond the compliments, one thing that she was adamant about today was getting better uh, protection and really uh, access to gear here for all the workers dealing with the coronavirus patients at Evergreen Hospital. Among the things she said that she's advocating for are a lot more masks and gowns, again, for those medical workers tasked with treating coronavirus patients. We're live from Evergreen Hospital tonight. Ryan Sims, Cairo 7 News. All right, thank you, Ryan. Today, crews are working on deep cleaning at the University of Washington after a staff member tested positive for coronavirus. The campus will stay open, but starting on Monday, all classes will move online. This affects more than 59,000 students, and the change will last through the end of this quarter. Cleaning crews hope to have every classroom, auditorium, library, and bathroom scrubbed down by the end of the month. You can find a full list of the school changes linked to coronavirus on the Cairo 7 News app. Other universities in western Washington are making changes to help stop the spread of coronavirus. Seattle University, Northeastern University, Seattle, and Seattle Pacific University will have classes online through March 20th. Seattle Pacific University also postponed large events and tours through April 3rd, but all campuses remain open. Seattle City officials have also canceled several big events. Those include this weekend's Leukemia and Lymphoma Stair Climb and Taste of Washington. The Seattle College Bound Scholarship and Women's March have all been called off as well. While some large events are already canceled, the Sounders are gearing up for their second home game in less than half an hour, even after a confirmed case of coronavirus in a CenturyLink field worker. The team practiced at Starfire Sports in Tukwila this week. Despite the coronavirus outbreak, thousands of fans turned out last Sunday to see the team's home opening win against Chicago. As for keeping the players healthy during the outbreak, Coach Schmetzer says that the message is the same one we're all hearing. Look, take good care of yourself. Wash your hands, don't touch your face, all of those things. You know, if you feel sick, you got to let our doctors know. I mean, we have a very competent medical team. Cairo 7 was notified that a part-time worker present at the Seattle Dragons XFL game two weeks ago tested positive for the coronavirus. The Sounders announced in a statement this week that they are in close touch with health officials. Tonight's game will start as scheduled at 7 p.m. It has been a week since a Washington man became the first person in the United States to die from the coronavirus. And since then, the number of deaths and cases have only gone up. Cairo 7's Simney Kim has a look at how we got here. It's been a week since the skilled nursing facility on the east side, Life Care Center of Kirkland, became the epicenter of the coronavirus outbreak in the United States. It was a nightmare. With the facility on lockdown, Cairo 7 met frustrated families every day this week. We want everybody in that facility to be tested, not wait until they're so sick that they're headed to the hospital. The first person to die of coronavirus in the United States was a patient at Evergreen Hospital. He was in his 50s with underlying health conditions and had no travel history. With each passing day, more confirmed cases and deaths linked to COVID-19 popped up in the state, the majority of them linked to life care. Help us get solutions for what to do with the people right now here in this, I'm calling it a Petri dish. The governor declared a state of emergency. First responders were quarantined. Schools became ghost towns as they shut down for deep cleanings. North Shore School District even made the decision to close for up to 14 days. On Thursday, Vice President Mike Pence arrived at Camp Murray. We are with you. He pledged billions in federal dollars coming to states to fight the spread of the coronavirus. And Cairo 7 even spoke by phone to a woman at Life Care Center of Kirkland about the conditions inside. You just don't know who's going to die next. Simney Kim, Cairo 7 News. If you have coronavirus-related questions, a Washington call center is ready to help. That includes questions about how it spreads and what to do if you have symptoms. Call the number on your screen, 1-800-525-0127.